two belt pulleys with radii of 4 inches and 9 inches respectively are 18 inches apart. Find the total length of the belt that goes around those pulleys. Okay, so again we have a smaller circle. Okay, that smaller circle has a radius of 4. Um, over here we have a larger circle. That larger circle has a radius of 9. Okay, now these two have a belt that goes around them. So there's a belt that runs from one circle to the other. Oops, and then down around. Sorry about the little lump there. And around, all the way around. Okay, so this belt is running around. We want to know what's the length of that belt. Okay, so what parts and pieces are we going to have to find? Well, let's take a look. Um, we'll have to find um, the length that goes around this circle. Um, and I'm actually going to cut it off right here. And I'm going to cut it off right here. Okay, the reason for that is notice this is symmetric. The top half is exactly like the bottom half. So if I just find the length of the belt for this half, I can multiply it by 2 and I'll have my full length. And that will take a little work off. Okay, so the next thing we have is that we know that we're going to have to find this length that's on the belt here, that's on that circle, the length that's on this circle, and then we're going to have to find the distance between the top of this circle and the top of this circle. Now, some people might want to call that 18 because it said they were 18 inches apart, but that would not be ac accurate. Um, the 18 inches is actually from center to center. Okay, so this distance here is 18 inches. Okay, well, there is a way to work through this. Good news. <laughs> okay, um, and the first thing that we're going to do um, is we are going to create, not create, but just sketch in here another circle here. Because what we want to do is, if I can, and this is going to be look a little bit off, I want to create um, a rectangle here. Okay, that's going to help me find the length of this top part. Okay, well, if I can find, if this is 4, then this would be 4. And if I can find this length, then I will know this length because in a rectangle the opposite sides are congruent. Where am I getting that from? Well, if we had another circle here, okay, and what would this distance be from the center here? Uh, the full distance top to bottom is 9. The part we've marked out here is 4. 9 minus 4, it leaves me with 5. Okay, so what we've created here um, is notice that this is a right angle here for this rectangle. This is also a right angle. It looks a little skewed. Um, we have our length 5 here, and then we have our distance from center to center. That's 18. Okay, so this looks a little odd, but I have a right angle here. It's due to my drawing error, okay? Um, we have one side length here. This would be our hypotenuse, and this would be our other side length here for our right triangle. Okay, so when we set up our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, remember a and b are the legs. The legs are where the right angle comes together. So I have a 5 and my x that I'm looking for. Okay, so I have my x squared plus 5 squared equals the hypotenuse. The side across from the right angle is 18. And again, that looks a little strange, but again, that's due to my inadequate drawing skills. So I get x squared plus 25 equals 324. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. I get x squared is 299. Take the square root of both sides. And I get 17.29. Okay, so what I found there is this x, 
17.29. And again, we created a rectangle here um, that makes this length 17.29. So I have one of my distances covered. That's one of the lengths I needed to find. Okay. All right. The other two lengths I need to find are here and here, those arc lengths. Okay. So remember to find an arc length, you take the radius times the radian measure of the angle that's creating your arc. So I need to find out what's the measure of this angle in radians. Well, I know this angle is 90 degrees, okay, and my diameter here is a straight line, okay, that's pi, so this is pi over 2. You can do this all in degrees and then change your answer to radians or um, you can do it all in radians. Okay, I'm going to do it in radians. So this is a 90 degree angle, which is pi over 2 radians. Um, my radius here creates a full half circle, which is pi. Okay, my angle I'm looking for here, which I'm going to call theta. Okay, how would I find theta? Well, whatever theta is, plus that pi over 2 angle, plus I'm going to call this here angle A. We're going to be using these, so I'm going to label them A, B, and C. I'm kind of going as we go. Angle A, which is very small, but it's still there. It's part of the problem. Okay, plus angle A. Together, those would be 180, not because they're in a triangle, but because they form a straight line together. And let me replace that 180 with radian measure real quick since we're doing this in radians. Like I said, you can do the same thing with degrees and then convert. Okay, Pi is a half circle or a straight line. All right. So what do we have now? Um, we have theta plus pi over 2 plus our a. I'm going to subtract this pi over 2 from both sides. Well, 1 pi minus a half a pi gives me what? A half a pi left. <laughs> okay. So in order to find my theta, I have theta plus a. I, again, I'm trying to find that theta measure. Okay. Theta would be pi over 2 radians minus whatever this a is. Okay. So I need to find angle a so I can find the theta for this angle here. Okay. And then I'll be able to find this arc length. That's, that's our goal right here. So let's get to it. How can I find the measure of that angle? I'm trying to look for the measure of angle A right here. Well, um, and you're going to want to have your calculator in radian mode for this. Remember our right triangles? We have a right triangle right here. I'm going to redraw it because, it, again, it was a little crazy looking. So here's my angle C, angle B, and angle A. I'm looking for angle A right now. And my hypotenuse was 18 and this side was length 5. Remember if we're talking about angles, for angle A I have the opposite side and the hypotenuse and clear back in lesson or unit 1 we talked about how the sine of an angle in a right triangle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of angle A is 5 over 18. Okay, so if we do want to find our angle, remember all we have to do is do the inverse or arc sine of both sides. But again, since we're dealing with radians and we want angle A as a radian measure, make sure your calculator is in radian mode for this part. Okay, so you're doing the arc sine or the inverse sine of 5 18 Make sure you put the 5 18 in parentheses. Okay, so again, double check. Is your calculator in radian mode? If it is not, get it there. <laughs> because we want a radian measure for our angle and not a degree measure. So we do the inverse sine of 5 over 18, which gives me 0.28 approximately. Okay, I'm going to round it off there. So my angle A is 0.28, which means my angle theta is pi over 2 minus 0.28. So calculate that. I divided by 2 is 1.57 minus 0.28 gives me 1.29 radians. Ah, so now I know the measure theta 
for my angle here, and I can use it to find the measure of this arc, which is part of my problem. So we now have the radius of that circle was 4 times the radian measure of our angle that was creating that arc, 1.29. Take 4 times 1.29, and I get 5.16. Okay, so now I have this distance also. Okay, what's left to find? Uh, looks like the only thing I have left to find is the arc length here. Okay, well, we have a similar issue here. Um, we don't know the measure of our angle. I'm going to call it beta, which is another Greek letter, letter <laughs> rather than theta. Okay, I'm going to call it beta. What is it made up of? It's made up of angle B and this, and they make a straight line or pi together. So our angle B plus our, I should have picked a different name, plus our beta together equal pi radians. So our beta will be pi minus that angle B that we have located right here. It's right here in our triangle. Okay, so you can do this one of two ways. You can do the same thing we did with our first angle, but use cosine since it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Or you can say, well, they were in a triangle together <laughs> and add them up. I'm going to use the cosine for more practice. So for angle B, we had the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is cosine. So we go cosine of angle B is equal to adjacent 5 over hypotenuse 18. Again, to find our B, we would do the inverse or arc cosine here. And when you're doing that, since we want radian measure answers, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Otherwise, you're going to get an answer that's far off of what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, inverse cosine of 5 over 18, if you're in radian mode, which you should be, is 1.28 or 1.29. Okay, so our angle B here is 1.29 radians. Again, we were going to find our beta by subtracting that from the straight line, which was a full pi. Okay, so our beta over here is pi minus 1.29 radians. Okay. When I do that, I get 1.852. Okay, so that means my angle beta here in radian measure is 1.852. To find the arc length here, I'm going to take my radius of my circle times my angle beta. So my radius of my circle is 9, and the beta I just found was 1.852. If I multiply those, I will have my arc length that I needed right there. So we take 9 times 1.852, and we get about 16.668. Okay, so we now have all of the parts we needed. Remember, we were trying to find the top half here. We found this arc length. We found the distance, the straight distance from here to here, and then this arc length also. We remember that was just our top half. So we're going to add those together and multiply them by 2. So our answer is going to be 2 times the 5.16 for our first arc length, plus the 17.29 distance between the two plus the 16.668 arc length for that last part. Okay, so add first and then multiply. We're going to add 5.16, 17.29, and 16.668. That gives me 39.118. That's the top half. Multiply it by 2 to get the full distance around both pulleys. And I get 78. Point two three six. Whew, that was quite a bit of work <laughs> for one little answer there. Okay, so again we created a rectangle here. 
then which created a right triangle. The hypotenuse was our distance between the two circles. Um, this leg was the difference between the two radius of our circle. Okay. Um, we used the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the other leg, which was the distance between the tops of our two circles. We then had to find the radian measure of, for each arc. Um, for this one, we had to take pi over pi minus pi over 2, which plus was pi over 2, minus this angle, which we found using that sign is opposite over hypotenuse and doing the inverse sign with radians in our calculator. Okay. We then used that to find the arc length. And then we did the same or similar over here, only we used cosine because we were dealing with an adjacent side. Okay. Then we added all of our results together, multiplied by 2. So you may want to go through that step by step again because it is a lot of steps.